this evening before we start. The Guatemala Task Force will be selling raffle tickets after all masses for the four beautiful quilts that are on display right now in the gathering space. Also, we have script cards available for purchase tonight, even though this is a week ahead of our planned schedule. If you were prepared to buy script, you can do so tonight. So we welcome you this evening to St. Charles. Today we make special remembrance for all those who have died this past year to be with our Lord and all the saints in glory from our St. Charles Borromeo community of faith. We join our praise to the Lord this day singing number 708 for all the saints, number 708.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace, the peace, and the love of our Lord be with you all. As we depart this weekend from the month of October, the month of the missions, the month of the rosary, the month of the church's focus upon the respect of human life, every age and stage, we enter into the days of the dead, All Hallows' Eve, the feast of all saints, the commemoration of the poor souls. We ask the Lord God to be with us as we reflect upon our own mortality and the brevity of human life. We ask God to help us to greater understand our purpose. As we call to mind our journey, we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. We lift up our voices now as we praise God's glory. pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you, we give right and praiseworthy service, and we ask that in return, you will grant that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the gifts that you have promised. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's all be seated now for the liturgy of the word as we offer our uh, honor to those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. And we remember by name those who have died uh, and buried from our parish over the past year. We also want to honor and to acknowledge Diane and Bob Matthew on their 60th wedding anniversary. Congratulations to you. God bless. Let's open our ears now to God's word. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. 
Moses spoke to the people, saying, Fear the Lord your God, and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments which I enjoin on you, and thus have long life. Hear then, Israel, and be careful to observe them, that you may grow and prosper the more, in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore, you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. Take, to the, take heart these words which I join to you today. The word of the Lord. from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, the Levitical priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, 
has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him, since he lives forever to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priests, to offer sacrifice day after day for his own sins and then for those of the people he did that once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men to subject to weakness to be high priests, but the word of the oath, which was taken after the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? And Jesus replied, The first is this Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, well said, teacher, you are right in saying he is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God, and no one dread to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. This weekend, we approach Los Dias de los Muertos, the Days of the Dead, All Hallows' Eve, the Feast of All Saints, the commemoration of all souls. And it is here that we touch our own mortality and we face our fears. Fears in life, fears of death, and fears of the world that awaits us. 
To corral these emotions, our readings today present the most important of all Jewish prayers, commonly known as the Shema. If you have Jewish friends, you probably know this prayer, for they say it often. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone, and we stand before him in awe of his greatness. We cower in fear of the immensity of the omnipotent mystery, for he is everything, and we are nothing. We live and we die, but he lives and he reigns without end. You see, in the presence of God, we are reduced to tears and shame. Shame for the damnation that we deserve. And yet, yet we are exalted in triumph when we grasp his divine mercy that can transform us and can make us like him, as the scripture says, holy, undefiled, innocent. There is no proper way for us to face this mysterious reality. In New Orleans and down in Cajun country, where bodies are buried above ground, loved ones this weekend and next week will create altars on graves, or they might even have picnics there to conjure the spirits of those who have gone before them marked with the sign of faith, their favorite foods. In Aztec lands of the Southwest, the ofrendas or the altars are made and decorated with candles and pictures and flowers that will welcome the spirits of deceased family members and friends as families gather to pray for their souls. In Mayan territories down in Mexico and Central America, masks are worn and sugar skulls with chocolate drippings are added to the ofrendas to show the sweetness of glory that is promised to those who were good, good in this life and good enough to overcome earthly destruction. And of course, as we know so well, across our own nation, children will dress up as ghosts and ghouls and goblins and various other worldly creatures, other worldly creatures, to illustrate death, death in this world. While others will dress up as superheroes and angels and saints to show the promise of a greater world, the world that has overcome the darkness. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Our God is one. And in our nothingness, our return to ashes and dust, in our return to skulls and skeletons and bones, we stand before the immense power and grace of our God, pledging our love to the inconceivable mystery of which we can only imagine with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our strength, all of our mind, all of our very being, and we pledge to love our neighbor as ourselves. But as you know, here on earth, we vacillate so much in this endeavor. I think that it is probably exemplified well for us in the legend of the old Irishman named Jack, who you may remember the story, his head was round, his complexion was orange, and in life he couldn't decide whether to follow God or to follow the devil. He was as bad as he was good, and he loved to play tricks on people. And when he died, he was not holy or innocent or undefiled, so he could not enter into heaven. But the devil didn't want him either because of the tricks that he played on him. And so he was condemned to walk the earth. And as he walked the earth, he was given a lantern that he was to carry through the darkness in search of doing good. By sweetening up the lives of others, by bringing treats rather than tricks to those that he encountered. Hence we have the legend, the story of Jack O'Lantern, who can still be seen in late October to walk in the light of Christ challenged to be counted among the saints in glory. 
And in so many ways, we are like Jack. And in so many ways, we need these days of the dead because these Dios de los Muertos will help us to grasp the reality of our own mortality, to pray for the souls of the departed, to do good by offering more treats than tricks in our relationships with other people, friends and strangers, and of course, to carry the light of Christ to find our own way to heaven's glory. Let us now offer our annual prayer for those deceased members of our community who have been buried from our parish over the past year as we ask the good Lord to help them to be counted among the lot of the saints in true light. Bob Hochstatter. Josephine Romeo, Paul Kranz, Amy Craven, Rita Tison, Tommy Sullivan, Jana Marie Wartzler, Pat Tremblay, Jenny Heiler, Rose Marie Salpietro, Joaquin Padilla, Rosita Delanoza, Jackie Cullen, Peg Walter, Richard Chamberlain, Marianne Huntington, Fermina Hernandez, Deb Parnicott, Armand Estevez, Art Pfaff, Carmela Badaluco, Mary Ann Wilson, Darlene Johnson, Lorene Mixon, Paul Bates, Ellie Rodriguez, Lois Flynn, Anthony Caravella, Paul Martin Jr., Rebecca Mick, Kay Molinari, Lola Scudero, Joseph Morantina, Dennis Monning, Jack Zimmerman, Mildred Adcock, Frank Palma, Linda Sue Cruder, Denise Adams, James Spiegelhalter, Judy Gladback, Nadine Lotel, Robert Amos, and Michael Adams. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May their souls and the souls of all of the faithful departed through the mercy of God now rest in peace. We stand together as one now as we bring forth our prayers and our petitions to our Heavenly Father. For the church, that Christ finds us eager and ready for him on the day of his coming, let us pray to the Lord. For all who seek elected office in our democracy, that they will serve with humility and integrity, let us pray to the Lord. For all who support the annual Catholic appeal, that they hear the call to follow Jesus 
by sharing their time, talent, and treasure. Let us pray to the Lord. For a spirit of willingness to help our neighbor, that we may embrace the poor, the unborn, the sick and dying, and those on death row. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who gather at this table, and for all who cannot take part, that they find refreshment and fulfillment in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, those we remember this day and throughout this month of remembrance, that all gathered here will one day share in the glorious life with our loved ones, especially Art Pfaff, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Bob and Diane, will you come up as we uh, conclude our prayers and we offer a blessing for you today on your 60th wedding anniversary. Tell me, now, where did the two of you get married? Was it here in Kansas City? Yes. Yes? yes. And uh, how did the Holy two of you? Yeah, Holy Trinity Church. I remember that at uh, 10th and Norton. Now, where uh, did you meet? Was it on a blind date or did you, uh, were you set up? or how? Yeah, it was his sister's fault. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's great. There you go. And Bob, did you have to chase her for a long time, or did she come along right away, or uh, you just uh, had quite the romance there? I just harassed her for a while. Harassed her for a while. Yeah, you just <laughs> stayed on her, and eventually she was going to give in. Well, what a, a great, great thing. And here, 60 years later, and as you think about the stages of marriage from romance and parenting and companionship and growing up together and growing old together and your children, your grandchildren, how blessed you are, and to know that that grace of God is with you. So I'm going to ask that you turn toward one another, you join your hands as you did on, on your wedding day, and that you renew uh, those vows. Bob, on this anniversary of your wedding, do you promise to continue to love your wife, Diane? Do you promise to continue to be good to her in good times and bad? in sickness and in health, do you promise to continue to love her and to honor her all the days of your life? I do. And Diane, on this anniversary of that blessed day that you married your husband, Bob, do you make the same promises to continue to be true to him in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health? Do you promise to continue to love him and to honor him all the days of your life. I do. Very good. I'm going to ask the community if you would extend your hands in their direction with me as we offer a blessing. Loving Lord, our God, we ask that you send down your blessings upon Diane and Bob. We pray that in those stages of the commitment of love that they have made and in the challenges that they have faced, the obstacles they've overcome, the achievements they've accomplished, the love that they share, the joy that is present in their hearts for the sake of their children and grandchildren. We pray that you will continue to nourish them as they fall deeper in love and deeper into the beloved, that in the hearts of one another, they realize that they are dwelling in the heart of you, our God. We pray your blessings to be upon them that they will continue to walk this journey of grace and that you will strengthen them until that day that you call them home into the kingdom of glory. We ask this in all of our prayers through Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Bob, do you want to kiss your bride? Yes. We pray for all family life. We pray for all married life. And as we bid farewell to this month of October, this month of life, we pray the Lord God to descend his grace upon all of our families and to strengthen husbands and wives and all of us in the ways of love. We pray this in all of our prayers through Christ our Savior. Let's all be seated now as we set the altar for the Holy Eucharist. 
we prepare our hearts to receive Jesus, singing number 525, Prayer of St. Francis, number 525. We stand together as one to pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. O Lord, may these sacrificial offerings become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your divine mercy. We ask you this through Jesus, our Redeemer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly it is right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For as we approach the festival of all saints, we seek to celebrate our share in the heavenly Jerusalem and our anticipation where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives eternal praise. It is towards her that we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our own human frailty both strength and good example. As we pray in gratitude, we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, and with one voice of praise, we now acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread from the table and he gave thanks and praise. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said to them, take this, all of you, eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper had ended, Jesus took a chalice of wine from the table and once again giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples. And he said to them, take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. So we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, and we offer to you, our God, this bread of life and this chalice of our salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church that is spread throughout our world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all who seek to serve you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, and the saints, with Charles Borromeo and all who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. In the immensity of the mystery of the one who is our God, we offer all of our strength, all of our mind, all of our soul, all of our heart, our very being, and we unite ourselves in prayer using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but look at the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your sacred will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. 
Peace, Joe. of our Lord Jesus Christ may it bring eternal life to all who will receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death brought life to our world, free me by this, your most holy body and blood from all of my sins and from every evil. Keep me ever faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. We join as one body in Christ, singing number 436 on eagle's wings, number 436.
our next song is number 431, Be Not Afraid. Number 431. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak. Four, three, three, excuse me. Let us pray. May the workings of your power, O Lord, increase in us so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. We ask you this through Jesus, our Redeemer. Amen. Well, as we bid farewell to the month of the missions, the month of the rosary, the month of respect for the dignity of human life, I want to pay respects to the Respect Life Committee uh, for all that they have done. And uh, you see the decorations here at the altar that will be taken down as well as uh, the rosary. And uh, if you did bring back your baby bottles, uh, this is the time that they are due. <laughs> I see some of you saying, oh, I forgot. Well, you could also bring them as soon as you remember. So uh, bring them back and we will uh, 
get those to the uh, wonderful, wonderful groups that help to support uh, young women who are uh, bringing life into the world. Also, uh, I want to note uh, that here in the Book of Remembrance, you can sign the name of your loved ones for the month of November, the month of the saints, and to pray for all of those poor souls. If you wish to bring pictures from home, we will uh, line the windows as we do, and perhaps here in the sanctuary, put those remembrances of our loved ones in this month of the dead. As we uh, sign their names into the book of life, uh, we remember that uh, they went before us marked with a sign of faith, and we follow in that journey, trying to do the very best that we can. And pray for the little ones as they go forth in the days ahead tomorrow evening and perhaps a few other little parties on All Hallows' Eve and into the Feast of the Saints, trying to get a little sweetness and a little taste of glory and beauty beyond the darkness of this world. We'll change our clocks back, and it'll get really dark uh, next uh, weekend. There is some candy up here if you don't get a chance to go out and uh, go and, and get one on your own. But remember, it's a reminder to be sweet, be good, be kind to one another, for that's what we are called to be, just like old Jack O'Lantern, who carries that light through the darkness of the streets, uh, trying to find the light of Christ. Let's pray that we might uh, do the same. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us today and always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is Sing with All the Saints in Glory, number 507.